Welcome to ECU Masters Training Part 7. In this video, we're going to be checking out the main setup and configuration details using our EMU Black software. This is going to be including things such as setting up our engine displacement, setting up our main rev limiters, looking at our coil dwell, setting up our injector data information, as well as taking a look at assigning our coil firing order and our injector firing order. We're going to have a lot to cover, so let's jump into this video so we can check this out. Okay, so let's get started. We're going to be taking a look at working with our main setup and configuration in this tutorial. So this is going to be all the background things that we need to make sure are correct in our calibration file in order for us to do any kind of actual tuning. Now, before we jump into the tutorial here and talk about what we have on the screen, you have to make sure you're using the correct page layout or template layout that I've supplied in the training course. If we go up here to desktops and we move into open desktop template, we're going to be finding this is going to be the main setup template I have open here right now. So you're going to select this option right here, click open and allow it to open on your screen. So that's what I have loaded right now. That's what we're going to begin this training tutorial with. So first and foremost, we're going to jump up here into the upper left-hand corner under Fueling General. We're going to work our way down here and across the screen, across all the different things we have to talk about here. So these are going to be, again, the background details we need to make sure are taken care of before we jump into doing any actual fuel or spark timing tuning or even getting the engine fired up and running. So let's jump up here into Fueling General and let's talk about what we have within this window. The very first parameter called engine displacement. We talked about this in the last video, talking about our volumetric, volumetric efficiency fuel calculations and fuel strategy. This represents the total volume the engine is going to displace. So in the volumetric efficiency table, the values that we have in that table are going to be in a percentage from zero to approximately 200%, and they represent the total amount of air mass that we can pack into the cylinder. Now we have to specify what that total volume can be in order for the ECU to calculate what the actual fuel delivery should be in fuel mass. So we know that the fuel mass is equal to air mass divided by target air fuel. We've we covered that in the last video. Um, this will be then representing what the total amount of air mass is based on what we have programmed into that volumetric efficiency table. So we need to make sure this is correct. If you've changed the Born stroke on your engine, let's say the a stock displacement was something like a 2000 cc, if we just enter it in here, and you've done a rebuild on the engine, and now you have a different bore, different stroke, and let's say your displacement's now 2300 cc, you need to make sure that you change that before you do any actual tuning. That needs to be represented accurately here for the fuel calculations to be properly performed. So if you uh, jump onto online, Displacement calculators, it's relatively easy. You just need to know the bore, you need to know the stroke, and the number of cylinders, and it'll spit out this value here. And this is going to be in cc's. So it's not going to be in liters. It's not going to be in uh, looking at cubic inches. It's going to be in values of cc. So looking at our next parameter here, this is going to be our fueling type. We can see the very first choice here. It's set on speed density. That's where we reference our MAP sensor, the manifold air pressure sensor. We'll find that we do have some other choices here. We have alpha N, and we have a couple other options here under alpha N. Now, alpha N is going to be referencing our throttle position sensor in our main VE table and our spark timing tables and not looking at our MAP pressure sensor. Now, this is used for a variety of reasons. If we have individual throttle bodies where we have rapid throttle movement, and we're going to have uh, really unstable map pressure readings, we can't reference anything for fuel and spark timing calculations from that. So that's where we use the throttle position sensor to get a more accurate reading. You also might find that at idle, a really large cammed car uh, is not going to idle very nice. It's not going to pull very good vacuum, especially at idle, and it's going to be really difficult to map out that vehicle, and that's where the alpha N would definitely be superior in doing your calibration and tuning process. But in most cases, we're going to be using speed density. That's probably 99% of the cars you'll ever encounter with the ECU Master. So this is what we're going to stick with right here. We're going to have a dedicated video for for alpha and in the training course in, um, in some of the videos, so we'll keep, keep an eye out for that, but right now let's just keep it on speed density. Our next option here is going to be our naval barrel correction. So if you're running in your alpha N, it no longer references your manifold pressure. If it doesn't have a manifold pressure reference, it cannot calculate what that barometric pressure could be at. So if we have it in alpha N, if we choose the alpha N mode, we have to make sure here under enable barrel correction. Thanks for checking out our teaser clip. If you want to see the rest of this video and more than 500 hours of current EFI training we have to offer, make sure you click right here. If you want to go and check out more teaser clips from this training course, click here, and you don't want to miss any of the videos we're going to be releasing on this channel, so make sure you subscribe and click here. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys later.